Thomas and Friends Retold. Episode 13, Henry and the Flying Kipper. One winter evening, Henry was getting ready to sleep at Tim's sheds when his driver said, We'll be out tomorrow. We've got to take the Flying Kipper. Don't tell Gordon, but if we pull the Kipper nicely, Sir Tupham Hat will let us pull the Express. The special coal we gave you is working well. Hooray! cried Henry. That will be lovely. All kinds of ships use the harbor at the big station by the sea. There are passenger ships, cargo ships, and fishing boats that tend to come here as well. They unload their fish on the quay. Some of it goes to shops in the town, and the rest of the fish go in a special train to other places far away. This is the train the railway men call the Flying Kipper. It was 5 a.m. when Henry arrived at the harbor. There was snow and frost. Men hustled and shouted, loading up the crates of fish. Henry coupled up to a long line of heavily loaded vans full of fish. The last door banged, the guard showed his green lamp, and the Flying Kipper was ready to go. Henry started slowly but surely. Come along, come along, puffed Henry to the freight cars. They shuddered and groaned. Trudy truck, trudy truck, all right, all right replied the freight cars, and Henry left the harbor with the flying kipper. The sun was starting to rise. Clouds of smoke and steam poured from Henry's funnel into the cold air, and the fire's light shone brightly. Hurry, 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 panted Henry. As they passed Ellsbridge, they were going well. The light grew brighter, and signal lights shone green as they passed. But when they were crossing the viaduct, there was a yellow signal ahead. Henry's driver prepared to stop, but the home signal was down. All clear, Henry. Away we go, he assumed. They couldn't have known the switches from the main line to a siding were frozen. Not to mention the home signal should have been sent to danger, but snow had forced it down. A freight train was waiting in the siding for the kipper to pass, and their driver and fireman were drinking cocoa in the caboose. The kipper is due, said the conductor. Who cares, said the fireman. This is good cocoa. The driver got up and said, Come on, fireman, back to our engine. And thankfully, they got out just in time. Henry was rushing on the same line as the siding and, unable to stop in time, crashed straight into the back of the train, destroying the caboose and landing on his side. Henry's driver and fireman managed to jump clear before the collision, and the conductor also jumped before the caboose was destroyed. Henry lay dazed and surprised. By the time the sun was fully up in the sky, James arrived with Judy and Jerome to help clean up the mess. And Sir Topham Hat came to see Henry. The signal was down, sir, moaned Henry. Cheer up, Henry. It wasn't your fault. Ice and snow caused the accident. I'm sending you to crew, a fine place for sick engines. They'll give you a new shape and a larger firebox. You'll truly feel like a different engine, and you won't need special coal anymore. Won't that be nice? Yes, sir, said Henry, doubtfully. Spring came and Henry was returning to Sodor from crew. He liked being a crew, but was glad to come home. Henry had a new shape and didn't need Welsh coal anymore and could now take standard coal. He felt much, much better. A crowd of people waited to see him arrive at Marin Station. Henry looked so splendid and strong that they gave him three cheers. Thank you very much, whistled Henry. It was mildly unfortunate that a lot of children are often late for school because they wait to see Henry go by, and they often see him pull the express. He does it so well that Gordon is jealous, but that too is another story.